friends, I'm Jess and welcome to the Hex Library where I post reading, writing book, and planner related content a couple of times a week. Today is going to be a wrap up for September and August. Most people probably say that as August and September but we're just here for the funsies at this point. currently October 25th and we haven't wrapped up for August and September yet. However, a lot of the books that I've read in the last couple of months have been for other larger projects that I'm doing. So a lot of those books will be talked about in other videos that you will see throughout November and December. Originally I was planning on doing a video every day in October, which as this is like the fourth video you've seen from me in October, you know that that clearly didn't happen. I just overshot. Like I just, I was reaching for a place that I was never going to reach because I clearly have been really bad this year about um, getting back on track and that was kind of the goal for the year and I haven't made it yet but it's not too late to keep trying so that's what we're doing. So we'll be going over the books from both months. Um, we'll be talking about the ones that are not in larger videos. I will tell you some of the ones that are going to be in larger videos and just kind of mention so that you know that those things are coming up in case you're new and not subscribed and you might know that you want to subscribe so you can watch those videos in the future as they are completed. Over the two months I read 22 books and DNF'd four books for a total of 6,609 pages. I had a very high average rating for the month. It was, well, for the months. It was 3.9. That does not include my four DNFs. I don't include my DNFs with my average rating because I don't rate DNFs. So my average rating for the books that I completed was 3.9, which is really good. We will be doing uh, the books that are added to Bingo Board from Hell and those that are not. So as always, we're going to start with the ones that were not on Bingo Board from Hell and we'll go through. I'm probably not going to have a lot to say about a lot of these because it has been a little while since I've read them. Um, but I do just kind of like to wrap things up so that we can, like we've talked about them and I can move on. Okay, okay. The first of the non-bingo board from Hell books is The Coworker by Freda McFadden. I gave this a four out of five stars. This is one of the newer ones. I think this one A has a bookmark in it. I think this one's a 2023. Yeah, 2023. So this is one of the newer ones and it follows two characters, uh, Dawn and... Natalie. Dawn is very weird. Everyone in the office knows that she is very particular. She has a very set way of doing things and Natalie is a co-worker of hers and when Dawn doesn't show up to work one day Natalie begins to wonder what happened like where is Dawn because Dawn always like showed up at a specific time. She was always reliable and you know had all of these perfectly set things done. So Natalie starts to wonder what happened to Dawn. Why hasn't she showed up to work? She tries calling her. She gets kind of a weird phone call that sounds like Dawn asking for help. There is just like some weird occurrences that are happening that leads her to go um, to Dawn's house to find out, you know, what maybe has happened to Dawn. This book does do a little bit of time jumping. It does have a dual narrative. And the fun thing about this book is that one of the narratives is the villain, but you don't know which person is actually the villain until you get further on into the book. So you're in two different brains and both brains are kind of putting the other person as the bad person and you don't actually know who the villain is until the end. So I did really enjoy this one. Again, I gave it four stars. Frida is not for people who are looking for something that is like eloquently written and like super well done and like the highest of all praises. But if you're looking for a mystery thriller that is fast paced and just fun, like a fun time to be in. Frida is for you. Next we have Artie and the Wolf Moon. Now I did read this but I did not count it as a rated book. I did not rate it because I read it via audiobook and having read it as an audiobook and then realizing that this is a graphic novel. I talked to someone about this earlier in the year. I believe it was Nell from Nell Diamond. I'll link her down below. I had this saved in my hoopla as like it looked super cute. It was about a girl who finds out that she's a wolf and it sounded like it would be something fun to read during spooky season because it was short. It was mid grade and I was like that sounds like fun and I had mentioned the book during a live show and Nell was like that's a graphic novel and the audiobook is wild and I was like okay so I'm saving this up for an experience and that is exactly what happened. I read it in August for a readathon 
and it was an experience. Uh, why does Hoopla have a graphic novel as an audiobook without the graphic novel available? Like if you could wa like listen to it and watch it at the same time I think that would be good especially because it is probably more on the younger end of mid-grade so like it would help kids that are like maybe struggling with reading comprehension or things like that where they could immerse themselves and do some immersive reading of a graphic novel but that was not the case and it's a lot of it is just howling <laughs> so it was an experience. Next we have The Secret Path by Christopher Pike. This is a uh, part of the Spooksville series by Christopher Pike. They are mid-grade. I'm gonna say this is his answer to like the Goosebumps novels. Now I have read the first Goosebumps book and I did not like that at all. I didn't, I did not like it. I think I gave it like a two star. Um, this I gave a four. I really enjoyed this. It was very short. This looks like it's a chunky book, but it's actually, well, it actually doesn't look like a chunky book. It looks like a normal length book, but there's actually three books in this, so. It is 117 pages. Um, it's really short. It does have some creepy moments in it. It was a good read. If you are a mid-grade reader or if you have a mid-grade reader in your life or you like to read mid-grade, then this would probably work for you if you're looking for something spooky that isn't goosebumps. Next we have The Love of My Life in Deeper Waters by F.T. Lukens. I gave this a 4.75 out of 5 stars. This is the fourth book by F.T. Lukens that I have read in the past couple of years and this was their first YA queer romance that they published. Um, they've had other things that they've published but this was the first of the YA queer romances and let me tell you that I did not expect to like this as much as I did because this was the first one. I expected it to not be as good as the other three that came out after it and you know it's just as good as them all. I have given all four of them five stars. They have been fantastic. I love the way that Lukens writes their characters. Um, they're just they're like soft bean little beans and I love them. Uh, this book follows Prince Tao and Athlin who is um, a, a, a prisoner on a pirate ship who's left behind and Tao saves him and it kind of becomes Tao's responsibility and then he jumps off the boat and Tao thinks that he's dead but then when they get to a port city they see them again and they're like mm, that's odd. It's got a bit of fantasy, a bit of magic. Um, Tao comes from a royal family. Again, he's Prince Tao. I believe he has five siblings. It's either four or five. They were all very well like explained, like you didn't, they were very well fleshed out characters. I really enjoyed their family dynamic. I love this world where his oldest sister is gearing up to be queen um, and because they have a royal family that any it doesn't matter whether you are male female or non-binary anybody can be the ruler and therefore this family is allowed anybody can love anybody that they want it's a very uh, queer friendly royal family love that aspect of it I just love these books if not evident from the fact that I bought these gorgeous special edition covers um, the others are right there. They hang out behind me. I love these books so much. I cannot wait for more from Lukens from this, I don't want to say this world because it's not a world, but like from this era of their writing because they do have a lot of other books out. Um, but this queer YA romance stuff that they're doing, I'm here for. We're gonna have another Christopher Pike and that is The Midnight Club. I give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It is again very short. This follows a group of kids at a, a hospice. I was like, what's the word for the place? It's not a hospital. They're at a hospice. They're all dying from various diseases. From the back of the book, it sounds like they're kind of coming together to tell scary stories and to kind of have this, um, if you're in my age bracket and are you afraid of the dark vibe, where they get together and tell scary stories. They're the midnight club. But I don't think that the stories that they tell are very scary. They're actually kind of dumb. The scary part to me more is the fact that there are these very young, bright, intelligent teenagers who are all going to soon be dead. And it was a good book, but it definitely could have been better. The spook factor could have been higher. Now, I know that this is made into a Netflix TV series, A, because there's a, it's on here. It's not even a sticker. It's just permanently there for the rest of forever. But I've also seen it on Netflix, and that was what made me pick up the book because I had seen the TV show trailer and was interested in it and I know that the TV show has like 10 episodes and this is a very short 213 page book so I'm interested to see what differs from the TV show to the book. 
And the next is Bloodbound by Patricia Briggs. This is the second book in the Mercy Thompson series um, that I read for a library video that I will link down below where I was reading uh, paranormal romances from the library. I can't really tell you what the second book is about because that would spoil what the first book is about, um, but I will say that the Mercy Thompson series follows Mercy Thompson, imagine that. She is a coyote shapeshifter or a skinwalker and she lives next door to an alpha werewolf and his pack of wolves and she grew up with a wolf pack because her mother was not a skinwalker and didn't know anybody else who kind of dealt with those type of issues and so she knew a werewolf and so she sent Mercy to live with the werewolves to like deal with all of like everything that comes with being someone who can shapeshift. You feel me? There are vampires, werewolves, skinwalkers. Are there other things? I don't remember right now. I've read so many paranormal romances that I don't remember everything that's in it. Um, but I do remember all of those things. From what I have heard, this series does become um, more romantically inclined as things move forward. I am very happy with like where romances are right now, even though they're not like huge in the book. I like that we're building relationships between characters. I think the characters are really well done. Um, if I didn't mention I gave this one a 3.75 out of 5 stars which I think is higher than what I rated the first book. But I really like the character building where we're going and the world building. We're getting more of the world in book two and kind of building more onto the lore of that. So I am really enjoying the book. I do plan to continue the series. The next book I read for part of a reading spooky arcs vlog. I have multiple of them uh, coming up over the next couple of months because I have a lot of spooky arcs that I had intended to have read before by the end of October, which didn't happen clearly. And that was You'd Look Better as a Ghost by somebody whose last name I believe is Perrin. So we'll talk about that one in that video. Now comes the time where we get to talk about the books from Battle of the Booktuber Vlogs. If you don't know, I took part in this competition called Battle of the Booktuber. It was created by Danny at Danny Dabbles. I will link the announcement video down below as well as the playlist for my round so you can see all of the videos that I have made for this round. That composition is myself and 15 other booktubers who are going in rounds of four at a time and we are recommending books to each other and then the winner from each of the four rounds there will be another round and then there will be a winner and we'll see who the winner is of the battle of the booktubers. It's a thing. Uh, the books that you can see in those videos are Just Mercy by Bran Stevenson, The Push by Ashley Audrain, Trust of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson, City of Brass by S.H. Akrabordi, The One by John Mars, and The Unmaking of June Farrow by Adrienne Young. Those were all read in the last couple of months and are all in those videos and again I'll link the playlist down below. Now we can get into the bingo board from hell. Okay so the first square is 12 books by 12 friends. I have not read any of those in the last two months so we're still at three. Are we going to get to 12 by the end of the year? No. We're clearly not. There's always next year. The middle upper square is 10 times under 60 physical, under 60 books on my physical TBR. And I'll be honest, I have no clue where I'm at just because of how much of a mess it's been. I know I've been under it for seven months so far. Um, the last two months, I don't know. I will count it again at the end of October and see exactly where I'm at. Um, and then we'll know for sure. But basically this square is just like, I don't know at this point. The next square was to read 24 new releases in 2024. I crushed it this month. I guess I should say in the last two months. Let's start with A Novel Love Story by Ashley Poston. I DNF'd this book. Let's talk about it. I DNF'd this at 15%. This has a 3.68 on Goodreads, which is not terrible for Goodreads. Uh, the first line of my review says, I'm going to be completely honest. As someone who has read most of Ashley's other books, I don't know who wrote this. And I stand by that statement. Oh, I'm dyslexic. I didn't read 15%. I read 51%. I'm even speaking the dyslexia today. So I had read this to about the 45% mark and I was really feeling like this was going to be a two-star book for me. And so as you, if you've been here before, you know that I will go and read reviews from people who I typically have like a good balance of book reading with. So I went and read reviews from some people and a lot of people who were feeling the same way that I was feeling at the middle of the book 
kept reading because they hoped it would get better at the end but at the end it went off the rails. I was like mm, okay let me go read some one star reviews for funsies. So I did. It was a fantastic time. If you're ever looking for a good day go read <laughs> go to Goodreads and read the one star reviews for this book because when I tell you they are genuinely artfully crafted. In fact I believe that the people who wrote the one star reviews for this book probably could have written a better book than this book. That's harsh. I'm not normally that harsh, especially to somebody who I've really enjoyed their books before. But I, I have so many comments, questions, and concerns. So basically this book is follows Elsie, who loves this particular romance book series. Uh, she's had a bad breakup. She normally goes on this yearly trip with her friends. They all bailed on her. So she's going on the trip by herself. She's like road tripping and she finds herself in the town from the book series that she reads. And it's got all of the characters there. There's all these characters that she knows that she's been reading about in books for all of these years, except there's one guy who owns the bookstore that she's never seen in the books before. And that's just weird. It's just kind of like things start happening and she starts to like realize what's going on. She talks about this guy's minty green eyes so many times that I swear if you took the words minty and green out of this book it would be half as long. <laughs> okay okay um, we're gonna talk about spoilers because because um, I need to so when you see the spoilers thing go away you can come back. I guess I should mention before we put the spoiler thing up that the author who wrote the book series that she loves died and so they never wrote the last book so she's never going to get the last book she just like happened to end up in the town that they're in weird now spoilers so we start seeing her with this bookstore guy what is his name does he have a name i mean they even have mint green eyes on the back of the book except there's a character in a lower town whom she can't place a grumpy bookstore owner with mint green eyes and an irritatingly sexy mouth and impeccable taste in novels and he does not want her finishing this book her car breaks down in this town she's stuck there she's in the book world first off i would be like i must have been in a car wreck and died first off so i'm just gonna have fun um but she's just like arguing with this bookstore guy um, she starts finding like these weird notes and things around um, like in this workshop and it turns out that the author who was writing the book who died like this was a place that she went and so there's like drafts of the story you know the characters that she had originally created and things like that. And there are even characters in the book that um, Elsie tries to change their happily ever after like they had a happily ever after and Elsie didn't like the way that things ended so she like tries to get them to do other things and it's like mm, okay um cool well so we find out that bookstore owner guy is being written into the book series as a love interest for this character that was kind of a self-insert character for the author of the book series which is weird what's weirder he's not a book character at all he's actually the fiance of the dead author he's also trapped there what obviously they fall in love they have weird random sex under a waterfall um there's something about this waterfall that's like special in all these books that like makes people fall in love or whatever they have a very graphic foreplay scene and then closed door sex which is wild but okay sure and then we get to the end of the book Elsie's finally like able to leave so her and the bookstore guy they fall in love they do this thing she convinces him to leave with her he's like finally ready to let go of the ex of the ex fiance or his deceased fiance and he's gonna leave with her until they run into the self insert character who is a book character he is a real human this is a book character and then he's like they have their meet cute and he decides that he's gonna stay in this fictional town that doesn't exist and have his happily ever after with this self-insert character who was written based off of the author who was his fiance. So then Elsie leaves town she goes back home she sees all of her friends. Does she open a bookstore? I think she opens a bookstore. So her ex-boyfriend and his new girlfriend were they engaged? Did he cheat on her with her? I don't remember a lot I don't remember it's been a couple of months since I read this they come to the bookstore opening which is weird like why would you do that and they like converse then 
here comes bookstore owner guy six months later like he just pops up and is like oh the minute you left I knew that I should have left with you I shouldn't have stayed in this fictional town and so he left but instead of going to find her he let her think that he stayed in this fictional town and left her and he like went to fix things with his family and his job like to be like yeah I'm good which is fine like you had been trapped in this book village for god knows how long so yeah your job and your family were not like they didn't know where you were clearly go talk to those people but don't wait like six months letting this girl think that you stayed behind in a fictional place with a fictional character who was a fictionalized version of your ex-fiance and then just pop up and be like oh but i love you and then i'm sorry what i have a lot of a lot of problems with the end of this book and I'm so glad that I didn't finish reading it. Um, I did skim read the end of it. Let's talk about something else shall we? Okay spoilers are over. That was just it was it was it was a new release. I wasted $20 on that. Okay the next book that we have in new releases is Here Lies a Vengeful Bitch by Cody Crowley. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This is a YA spooky which you know I love. It follows our main character whose name is Annie and Annie was murdered. They think they killed a girl. They only made a monster. Annie Ling was murdered, but that won't slow her down. Uh, so Annie, clearly murdered. Um, she ends up in this town with some people who can see her, which she thinks is weird. And she goes to find vengeance against the person who murdered her, which valid. If I was murdered and I had the ability to get vengeance upon that person, I would also. I believe this is Cody's debut. They have a fantastic uh, Instagram. If you are into Instagram, it's very atmospheric, very witchy, very cool. Highly recommend. The back of this was blurred by Mindy McGinnis, who, if you've been here before, you know I love. She's a great human. I've met her in person a couple times for book signings. She's super fun. We love her. Uh, and this book very much feels like a Minnie McGinnis vibe. If you've read any of her, especially the more recent books, A Long Stretch of Bad Days and Under This Red Rock. I was like, I know they're over there somewhere. They'll tell me what their names are. It is very much like a creepy vibe book with girls getting vengeance type of story. And we love that here. I pre-ordered this one from my local indie and I apparently have been getting lots of books there from the last couple of months because I keep pulling bookmarks out of these books and they're from the local indie. <laughs> when I went to go pick it up uh, I was behind because I had shingles and so I was supposed to be not around people. It's a possibility of passing the virus so if you have shingles you're supposed to stay away from people who are unvaccinated, small children, and the elderly so I just basically went to work and that was it during this time period just because I didn't want it to give it to anybody. It had been sitting in the bookshop for a couple of weeks by the time I actually was able to go in and pick it up. And she asked me my name and I told her and she's like, what's the title of the book? And I was like, uh, Here Lies a Vengeful Bitch. And she said, oh yeah, I know that one. I seen that one earlier. And I'm like, yeah, it's kind of, it's a, it's a good title. We like her. Um, so yeah, I gave this 4.5. I really enjoyed it. I hope to read more from Cody in the future. Next in the new release train is Sleep Tight by J.H. Merkert. Uh, Merkert. Marker. We're gonna go with that. Uh, this is, as you can tell, a book of the month book. I picked this up with Julie and Amber to read as a buddy read. Uh, I gave this a three out of five stars. I probably would have DNF'd this at 15% had it not been for the fact that I was having a good time making fun of it with Julie and Amber. It wasn't awful. It just wasn't great. The sole survivor of a serial killer might hold the key to stopping a new spree of murders in this propulsive horror thriller in the vein of the black phone and the whispering man. The main character in this, her name is Tess. She is a detective. Her father was the detective of this mass serial killer case where they found a guy who had murdered multiple teenagers and uh, men in, had buried them in his basement. And there was one kid who got away and when this mass murderer was put to death on death row he said beware the one that got away and so they think that like the kid that got away is you know something weird going on with him well present day there are murders taking place that are similar to those murders and there this guy has like a cult following and then um people who were connected to the original case start dying and Tess has been threatened and so she has to go back to a back to her hometown where all of this took place to try to figure out 
who this copycat killer is and why and how and what they have to do with the one who got away. It wasn't awful, it just also wasn't great. I think if you are newer to mystery thriller this would be a good start especially if you're interested in something that has like a cult kind of vibe. The author definitely did like a plot twist at the end and I feel like they very much were like ha 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 look at this thing that I did and I was like yeah I clocked that 150 pages ago bro. It's still a really decent book and I will definitely read more from this author in the future. I didn't hate it it just wasn't fantastic. The next book will be in the future spooky arcs vlog wrap up and that is Looking for Smoke by K.A. Coble. I did write my review for that on Goodreads because it is um, a debut by an Indigenous author and so I wanted to at least get it up on Goodreads by their release date so I had to do that but we'll be talking about it more in the video. And the last new release which will also be in an upcoming video for uh, my leftovers from Battle of the Booktuber because they like each person recommended us four books and we only read two. Um, one of the ones that was recommended to me that was also already on my list was The Haunting of Velkwood by Gwendolyn Keast. So we'll be talking about this one in the future as well. That was five books which took us from 15 to 20 for our 24 new releases. So I only have to read four more new releases by the end of the year and as I'm reading a bunch of spooky arcs we should not have a problem with that. I actually finished one today. The next square is library books. We added a big fat zero to that. Uh, so that is continuing to sit at eight of 12. Not doing great there my friends. After that we have my physical TBR backlist. I wanted to read 24 of those by the end of the year and we were at 17. I did in fact read one of those. I read Don't Move a Muscle by PJ Knight. This is the second to last book of the Creepover series that I have left to read. I gave this a three out of five stars. It is about a girl who gets a job at a um, statue garden place. It wasn't as creepy as I had expected it to be but I think if you are if you're buying for a mid-grade reader or you have a mid-grade reader in your life they probably would enjoy this. Our angle probably just moved like crazy because I had to stop so that we could, the sprint was over and had to do things and come back. Okay uh where were we at? We were in this book over here doing things in this book. That was the physical TBR backlist. That was the only one I read. So then we have book club books, uh, one of which was a novel love story, which we already discussed. The next um, was The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien. I DNF'd this. This book is about the Vietnam War, I believe, if I remember correctly, and it is about the things that the guys carried with them, I suppose. The author said that they kind of wrote it based off of conversations that he'd had with some different, uh, another bookmark, members of the military who had been in the Vietnam War. Okay, again, this is not a book that I would have picked up had it not been for our book club, but I'm just going to read to you my paragraph long review on Goodreads so that you can get the full effect of my feelings of this book. A giant no thanks for me. I only made it a few pages in. The very first character was talking about photos and letters he had of a girl whom he was in love with that he knew didn't love him but she did write to him during the war and that's fine. But then he went on to say he knew she was a virgin. She had to be no less than three times in two pages. He mentioned that one of the photos was her playing volleyball and she had the dry and hairless legs of a virgin. Whatever the fuck that's supposed to mean. And then he mentions that he put his hand on her knee at the movie theater and kissed her and she didn't seem to like it. And he should have taken her upstairs and tied her to the bed and touched her knee all night long. Fuck this. I give zero fucks about the rest of this book. This completely turned me off from it. So that's what I have to say about that. This was um, one of the book clubs that I couldn't go to because I had shingles and again as I mentioned I was abstaining from being in public while I had shingles and was contagious. I am sad that I missed the discussion because I would I still would have went to the discussion even though I didn't finish reading the book. Um, because there are um, some older folks in our book club who um, were young during the Vietnam War and I definitely I love to talk to people about history and just what life would have been like then and I would have loved to have gotten like their perspective on a lot of the things that happened in this book versus my perspective but yeah I just that whole thing 
just completely turned me off from even being interested in reading this book any further so and my other book club book for the month was queen of shadows uh by sarah damas this is the i don't know how many far in books fourth book one two three fourth book and the throne of glass series I gave this a 4.75 out of 5 stars. I fucking love this book. Let me first say that uh, this author, not a fan. Not a fan of her. I, I don't, I don't like her. But her stories are fun. They are a good time. I'm vibing. The first half of this novel is a fucking heist story that would rival Six of Crows. And people talk about how trash her writing is and I just don't see it. Like when you get this far into the series and you get this. So this author to me is in a similar vibe of Cassie Clare except with more world building wherein it's the connections between the characters and the like the the way that the characters really move the story that make me love these books. So much Manon, so much Abraxas, love them. Just the connections that we get to see um, Selena being back in her hometown. Well, not her hometown, but you know what I mean. With her being there and like trying to deal with the things that have changed since she's been away. And just so much happens in this book. It is a beefy novel and so many things happen and I just had the absolute best time reading this. I'm enjoying reading this series as well as the Court of Thorns and Roses series with um, the group who's reading it. Uh, we're reading all of this author's books. I, it's permalinked in the description box, Bethany's announcement video for the readathon. If you want to join us if you're rereading. There are six of us that are hosting it. I am the only one of the six who have not read the series. The other five are all rereading the series. I am reading them for the first time. So I'm having the best time. I've already planned a reread of the series because uh, Brittany at Brittany Loves Reading, she is, her Patreon has been talking about wanting to read these, but she's got so many books going on that she's like, I'm probably not going to have time to put these on the docket until 2026. And I was like, that's great because I will have finished reading everything by 2026 and I will be ready for a reread. So <laughs> in 2026, I will be rereading this series because I am having a fan fucking tastic time. That was three book club books and that took our number from 16 to 19. We only needed 12. We're crushing it. We're probably gonna double it. Next we have rereads and I reread five books in the months of August and September. They are the first five books in the sweep series. However, I am doing a full spoiler vlog of me reading the series. Um, the first book is spoiler free and the subsequent 14 will be spoiler filled. Will I ever get to the end of it? I don't know but I'm I'm working on it okay. So far I've only made it to book five which is all the farther I made it when I originally read the series and then didn't make it any farther so and it's not because I'm not having a good time it's because there's not an audiobook and I don't like to read with my eyeballs and I if I can't listen with my ears, if I can't read with my ears, I'm not having a good time, okay? Anyway, there will be a whole, at some point, review vlog for those books. But those are the five books that I reread. With that, I needed 10 rereads for the year, and that puts me at 12. So we've met our goal. Go us. The next square is 10 big books for the year. A big book for us is a book over 500 pages. I read, as we just discussed, Queen of Shadows and also um, City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty, which we talked about earlier, will be in the Battle of the Booktuber videos. That puts us at six for the year. Will I read four more of these? Um, I've already read A Court of Mist and Fury. Oh, that was right in October. I'm currently reading A Court of Wings and Ruin. And I will be reading, ooh, that's probably it. Those are probably my last two big books of the year. So I may not hit that. I may only get to eight, but we'll see what happens. And then the last square is 10 finished series, and I did not finish any series this month. Um, so we're still at eight for that. For pretty much everything other than the 12 books by 12 friends, we are crushing it this year. So that was a amalgamation of the 22 books that I read and four books that I DNF'd. I found three bookmarks while I was going through those. That's crazy. 
Anywho, if you made it this far in the video, leave me a crown emoji, um, just because Queen of Shadows is the last book that we were really talking about, so put your crown on, leave me a crown emoji, just to let me know that you were here. If you would like to discuss any of these books any further, especially the ones that I really enjoyed or really didn't enjoy, you can hit me up in the comments down below. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related content a couple times a week when I'm actually doing the things. If you don't want to miss anything that we have going on in the future in the library, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!